Students, you've just finished writing a paper on the Holocaust, and now it's time to turn that paper into a story. In order to do this, you're going to use a piece of software called Photo Story 3. It was recently installed on your computer, so let me show you where to find it. If you click the Start button, you might see it on this list here. It might be brand new. If not, you're going to search for it and you should be able to find Photo Story 3 for Windows. Go ahead and open that program up. You've got some options. You're going to begin a new story because you haven't started yet. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. The first question it asks you is to import pictures. Now this is the part where you have to do a little work before you start building your story. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and bring up my Google search bar. So I've previously gone to google.com and I have, I'm ready to search. You need to find at minimum 10 pictures about the Holocaust that tell your story. Each of your stories will be individual, meaning you could all have different pictures. My suggestion is, depending on what that story may be, find the pictures that tell the story. If I, say, wanted this one, I can right-click, save that image, I just happen to have a folder under pictures regarding the Holocaust. Go ahead and save the image. So you want to find the 10 images that will help you tell your story. Once you've done that, go ahead and open the photo story back up and import those pictures. You don't have to import them in the correct order. You can change the order later, but if you put them in in the order that you want them in, that's one less step later. Now let's say that's the order. It looks like I got the same one twice. Let's say this is the order that you want to tell your story in. Hit next. It's going to ask you about black borders. Go ahead and hit yes. Now, you have the option to add a caption or some text that describes the picture. Here's kind of a general rule of thumb on adding text. If you think it enhances what you the picture tells you, then add the text. If you feel it's unnecessary, for instance, I could say, this is Adolf Hitler. But I don't feel that that enhances the, te the uh, picture, so we don't need that. So that's kind of up to you to decide. Hit Next. This is the most important part of your project. You've chose the pictures wisely. Now it's time to narrate each picture and tell your story. Something that may help you is you can actually type the script as to what you're going to say right here in this box. This will help you narrate the picture. Keep in mind you don't want this to sound too robotic, so maybe you could just put a few notes as to what you're going to say on each picture. When you're ready, hit record, and whatever you say will now be part of that picture. We have eight seconds of narration that go along with this picture. I'm going to go ahead and preview that so you can get a feel for what that looks like. And whatever you say will 
now be part of that picture. If you're satisfied with the narration, hit next. I'm not sure about background music, but it is possible if you have some music you'd like to add, it may be worth a try. Keep in mind, this is a serious project, so you wouldn't want to put any random music behind your narration. If you're happy, let's go ahead and preview what this project looks like. And whatever you say will now be part of that picture. Doesn't look too bad. Last important step, save your project. Save it to a location that you're going to be able to find it. For instance, I have OneDrive. I would want to save my project somewhere where I can find it. Your teacher will give you the exact specifics of the assignment, but these are the basics of using the program. Have fun!